listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Well, hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Ty Brown of Six Figure Dog Business. This is the show where we teach you how to start or grow your dog-related business to a healthy six-figure per year profit. Now, today on the show, I'm pretty excited. I ran. Uh, this is somebody that I've been following for a long time. I've been following her blog, and she's recently come out with a new product, a new service that I think is going to be interesting to a lot of you out there. We're going to be talking with Lindsay Stordahl, and she's going to talk about a dog walking business. So stay with us. We're going to be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in Paparazzi, Candid pictures of you and your pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No, to my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. Schools in session on Pet Life Radio with Teacher's Pet. Learn how to communicate with your pet, train your pet, and see the world from your pet's point of view. You may even learn a few tricks yourself. Teacher's Pet, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, and we are back, and uh, welcome to the show today. I'm really excited. Like I say, I have been following this person's blog for, I don't know, probably a couple years now. Uh, She's got a great blog that has thousands and thousands of visitors, a very popular blog. And so with us today is Lindsay Stordahl. Am I pronouncing your last name correctly, Lindsay? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Welcome to the call. I'm thrilled to have you on here today. Thank you. And so, uh, so for those of you who may or may not know who Lindsay is, you have a uh, your main website would be thatmutt.com, right? Is that your main website? I know you've got several. Yep, thatmutt.com was kind of my first website. It's mostly a blog, and I write about dog training and dog behavior issues, mostly about my own dog. Okay, and uh, and like I said, I've been following it. And one thing that you do is is um, you did it kind of part time for a while, if I'm correct. But then you transitioned into full time. You are uh, well. I guess I can't call you a dog walker. You're a dog runner, correct? Yeah, that's right. And so, what uh, what is that business? What is your dog running business? Well, I started primarily running dogs, and then I did add walking because a lot of people, I know they have older dogs or smaller dogs that prefer. To walk, and then I added the pet sitting visits. And what I like to do with that is take the dogs on running sessions while I'm doing pet sitting. So it's not just visiting the dogs; they actually get some good exercise while their owners are out of town. Okay, and uh, and so now here recently, the reason why I invited you on this show today is you recently came out with a new product. Is that correct? Uh, what is this new product you came out with? Well, I wrote an ebook on how to start a dog walking or running business. And it's just to give people some tips and ideas. If they've already started their business or if you're just thinking about it. Because a lot of people think about it and they're not sure, they're not ready to take that jump. So it's just a way to give people some ideas to start with. 
Okay. And so before we get into some tips and ideas that you can give us for people that might be wanting to start or for people that already have started their business, how did you get started? I mean, what was kind of the, uh, what was the evolution of where you are before to where you are now? What, what happened in your life? Well, I guess I started thinking about doing dog running once I adopted my lab mix ace, just because he's always been one of those hyper dogs. He's hard time sitting still. And I've always been a runner on my own. So once I got him, I started taking him out for an hour each morning before work. And that helped him so much. just helped him calm down and made training easier. And since I worked at a newspaper, I was kind of working like noon to midnight, some weird hours. So he would be mm-hmm. home for so long. And so I'd run him in the morning, and then I started running other people's dogs in the morning while they were at work. Okay. So that's how I started doing it part-time. And what did it take for you to transition from part-time to full-time? How did that jump happen? Because I know a lot of people, I remember that jump myself, and it was scary. And, uh, you know, I had a wife and a kid and another kid on the way. And uh, a lot of people, it's a big, scary jump. What was it for you? How did it, how did it happen? Yeah, I don't know. It took. It was really hard for me to... Um, it helped that I don't have kids and it helped that I have a really supportive boyfriend. And it did help that I was working kind of strange hours anyway. So I was already working weekends and then I had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. So I was able to be doing some dog walking and running at that time. And then finally I just had to jump in and quit my job because that was what... I used that as my motivation. Because once I didn't have that paycheck coming in, I had to advertise my business. I didn't have a choice, so. Okay, okay. There was no going back, so I quit. <laughs> yeah, and so sometimes, you know, you have to you have to burn the ships, I guess. You know, burn your bridges so you can't go back, and you just quit, and you, and you go for it, right? Yeah, and I know that's probably not possible for everyone, but there are ways but, to do it part-time for a while, and then slowly cut back on your hours from your other job, or just get another part-time job for a while. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, you're right, because the way that I did it was somewhat similar, and this was several years ago, but, you know, I had a, a graveyard job. So I just basically cut out sleep for about six months, and, you know, I'd do my graveyard yeah. job, and, and then, uh, you know, I, I'd start my dog training business during the day. And uh, anyways, I guess when there's a will, there's a way, and that's what you've shown is when there's a will, yeah. there's a way. And so, so yeah, that's, that's excellent. And so how long have you been full-time with your business where you don't have a job? Um, a year and a half ago. It was the summer a year and a half. 2008. Okay. Yeah. And would you say so far it's been rewarding? Has it been worth it to quit the corporate gig and, and just be on your own? Yeah, it was worth it immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so, I mean, as far as, and I don't need to, uh, you know, we don't need to get personal about details, like specific details, but financially, has it been more, less rewarding, or the same rewarding as as your corporate job? Well, now that I've been at it for a while, it's very rewarding because I'm making more money than I was at that time. But it does take a while to get going, so it is, I mean, you have to find something you're passionate about and stick with it and believe in yourself. Okay. And so, well, let's talk about that then. For those that are just thinking about it. What would you say are some critical things that they absolutely must have if they're going to do it? I mean, is a website critical? Is a flyer critical? I mean, what are the critical components to starting out a pet sitting or a pet walking business? Well, I would say the website is definitely important. A lot of people will look at you more seriously if you have a website. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can always upgrade that later on. I just use a free WordPress theme and it's pretty easy to set up. And most mm-hmm. designers can do that for you pretty cheaply. Flyers, and, I mean, I did that a lot. In, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, because one thing, your website is basic, but it's clean, it looks nice, uh, and it gets the job done. Before we go on to flyers and other stuff, do you have any tips for getting people to actually come to your website? It helped me to have a blog, just because then people would go from there to my site. And the more content you have on your website, it helps for the search engine. I also did Craigslist ads. I would direct people directly to my site. I didn't like waste a lot of time making fancy Craigslist ads. They would just basically be a link to my site, and they could go there for all the info. Okay, so you would say content is pretty critical. Do you like, because uh, I know that this is one thing I do that I always recommend to my clients to do, do you include the city names, the cities that you serve? Do you include those all over on your website? Yeah, yeah, that helps for getting your site to rank for your for locally. Gotcha. And I do want to highlight that because, like I say, a lot of people, um, it's one of the most basic things you can do to your website. For those of you listening to this right now who have a website, 
right now you serve an area. You know, it might be a tri, you know, tri city area, it might be one city, it might be a dozen tiny little towns. Whatever it is, people are searching for those things online. And so uh, you need to inc- – well, you know, people are searching for pet sitting in Fargo. People are searching for dog training in Orlando. And so you need those terms on your website. And that's one thing I've noticed that yep. you do very well, Lindsay, is you include a lot of that on your website, correct? Yep. And if you're in a smaller area with not a lot of competition, really that's all you'll need and you're going to pop up right, at, right in the top page mm-hmm. for Google. And, and if uh, you have more competition, it'll take more work. But. You're right, but that's the thing. You know, I'm in uh, – me personally, I'm in a mid-market area. I think you – Fargo yeah. would be considered a small area where you live, correct? Yeah. yeah. And so I, I'm in a mid-market area, but most of my competitors have no clue about some of even the basic things that we just mentioned. And so even in mid-market areas, you can dominate those areas in the search engines if you just – you know, include content like you mentioned, Lindsay. You know, include your city names. And just a blog is amazing because a blog just has all this great content that keeps getting updated, updated, and the search engines see that and they just eat it up. They love it. For example, how many visitors does your blog get every month? Oh, gosh, I don't even remember what it's up to now. Um, it's about 700 to 800 per day. Wow. Um, my running site gets less than that, but sure, a lot sure. of traffic goes to my running site from my blog, too. So. Gotcha. And so would you say that's a good strategy? Because I've actually considered doing that and I haven't done that. But you've done it really well to where you have a blog that's separate from your website. A lot of people have a blog on their website, but you have a blog that's separate from your website and traffic funnels into into your main business. Would you say that that's a good strategy? Or if you had to do it over again, would you do it that way or would you all do it on one big blog? I guess it just kind of happened that way for me. I don't know. that. I mean, I think you could do it all on one site. I like to keep my pet sitting and dog running clients separate from everything else just because it's more local. And I do have a smaller blog on that site where it's pictures of my clients running and they can check in on their dogs when they're out of town. Okay, excellent, excellent. So now back to what you are mentioning before. You said you tried flyers. What? Uh, how did that go for you? Let's see. It's kind of give or – I mean, it just depends if the right person happens to see it. In the beginning, I – put out tons of flyers everywhere in town, whether it was a bulletin board, I put one out. Now that I have that client base, I don't really do that at all. For people just starting out, I'd really recommend going to the vet, the vet clinics in your town, especially like in the spring, everyone in Fargo is going in for their, to bring their dogs in for heartworm testing. So since everyone's going to the vet at that time, it'd be perfect to have your flyers there. Um, also, grooming shops are a good place. Okay. And then now, places like grocery stores and that, that didn't seem to help me a lot, but I guess you could, you could do it anyway just when you're starting because you never know who will see it. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's a good point. You know, uh, there's certain things that are basically free that it never hurts to do, but I think you're right because um, I've tested this out and I know other people have tested this out, other marketers that I've been around. Typically, putting up flyers at the grocery store isn't going to work very well. Now, you mentioned one thing that I want to come back and I want to touch on, and that's working with the groomers and the vets. Now, we've got to go to a break right now, but stay with us. When we come back, I'm, I want to get that information out of you about how to work with vets, how to work with groomers, and how to actually grow your business using these partnerships. So, so stay right with us, and we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. It's time for school for you and your friends, your furry best friends. Train your dog the fun and easy way with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Teacher's Pet host Pia Silvani teaches you step-by-step how to train your dog the fun and easy way. You get eight 30-minute live audio training sessions, complete transcripts of each session, plus a basic training manual to get you and your dog off to a great start. Training begins the moment you bring your dog home. Teacher's Pet Sessions offers positive reinforcement training to shape your dog's behavior and encourages upbeat, enthusiastic responses to ensure that your dog will enjoy learning. Teacher's Pet Sessions dog training is fun at both ends of the leash. So listen, learn, and laugh with your dog with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Get your copy of Teacher's Pet Sessions Volume 1 today. To order, go to TeachersPetSessions.com. 
Hi, this is Pia Silvani, your host. Bring your dog, tug toy, and treats, and get ready to have some fun. TeachersPetSessions.com How many pets is too many? Do you know somebody whose life is overwhelmed by their animals? Maybe we can help. We're looking for people to be in a new TV series about really large animal families. We can offer expert help, free resources, and the chance to tell their story. If you or someone you know owns a house full of animals, call us toll-free at 1-877-MY-8PETS. That's 1-877-MY-8PETS. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, and we're back. And in the last segment, we were talking with Lindsay here about how to get started with a pet sitting or a pet walking business. And she talked about a website, and uh, she talked about using a blog with a lot of good content on there to drive a lot of people to your site. And for those of you who are not doing this, it really would behoove you to do this because like Lindsay mentioned, and you might not get this many visitors, but she's getting seven or 800 visitors a day to her blog. Just imagine if one out of 700 becomes a customer, there's a new client every day. Now, you know, ratios are going to work in different ways at different times, but obviously you are not going to sell anything unless people are coming and seeing your website. So, so in any case, really work on your website, work on driving traffic to the website with good content and using the city names like she talked about. Now, Lindsay was also talking about partnering a little bit with vets and groomers on growing your dog walking or your pet sitting business. Can you give us some tips there? Can you give us some training there on what a pet sitter, whether they're starting out or whether they're established, what they should do to work with a vet or a groomer? Well, rather than just walking in and hanging up your flyer and leaving or just dropping them off, it's really good to actually introduce yourself and get to know each each of the vets in town. And it's not you won't always be able to talk to the vet, but at least the vet tech or whoever works behind the desk. And suggest that maybe they recommend you to people who have really hyper dogs or overweight dogs. And then come back again in a month and ask how it's going and maybe drop off some more. If you have business cards or brochures, that's a perfect place to drop those off as well. Okay, and so I guess in other words what you're saying is you need to offer them something. You need to say, hey, I can help your clients this way, right? I mean it needs to be benefit driven I guess is what you're saying? Yep, they need to have a reason to promote you. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's one of the things that, uh, you know, when I'm working with my uh, pet professional clients and doing consulting, that's one thing I always try to get across. And it sounds like that's one thing you're teaching in your ebook is, you know, it's uh, the old joke is what's the, the biggest radio station in the world? It's WIIFM. In other words, what's in it for me? And so if you just go up to the vet and you say, hey, I do this, I do this, I do this, well, the vet's left there sitting, <laughs> they're thinking, well, what's in it for me? Yeah. And so it's important, you know, if you're a pet sitter like yourself, if you're a pet walker like yourself, if you're a dog trainer like myself or, or whoever you are and whatever service you offer, you have to, when you're setting up these partnerships, offer them what's in it for them. Well, a lot of them want to know you're serious about it too because there will be lots of people who just come in there and they think they're going to do dog walking, but then a week later they're not. So they don't want to be promoting people who aren't really serious about it. So they love to hear that it's my full-time job and it's not just something that they won't be able to use in a week. Gotcha. You're not just trying to pick up a little extra cash on the side. and right. and, and, uh, and so, so uh, you want to establish a relationship with all, I mean, not just the vets, but the groomers and trainers in town. Okay. That brings up a good point there. Do you see a lot of that? I mean, is there a big burnout rate? Do a lot of people start walking dogs and then suddenly stop? Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of it. People seem to think it's an easy way to make money, and it's really not. I mean, you have to work at it and build up your clients. It takes a couple. For me, it took about six months 
Okay. To okay. And I guess the allure would probably be the low barrier of entry. In order to become a pet sitter or a dog walker, you don't need expensive equipment. You don't need. You don't necessarily need expensive training. Anybody, and that's probably why people quit so easily is because they started so easily, right? Yeah, that's a good point. And so, so in any case, I mean, that's, that's good to know because sometimes I think a lot of pet sitters see, oh my gosh, look at all the competition. I go on Craigslist and every other person is a pet sitter. Well, I guess if you stand out and you really make yourself professional and you do everything you can, you've got that lasting power where the other one might be someone who's just, you know, a high school student that's, that's trying to earn a little bit of extra money. There's a lot of students that will advertise on Craigslist. Gotcha. So let's go to your book. Let's talk a little bit more about your book. What can people find uh, if they purchase your book? What can they find in there? What information are they going to get? What benefits are they going to get? Um, I just tried to be really honest and go through some of the problems I face and some of the marketing techniques that I use. And doing, I talk a lot about volunteering with some of the dog rescues in town and getting support that way. Okay, and we'll talk about that. What did uh, what did that do for you and your business, volunteering with the rescues in town? Um, that was one way to really help me gain experience with some of the more difficult dogs. You, I mean, a lot of people that just love animals, they just think, oh, I could be a dog walker, and then they find out, oh, well, some of these dogs are pretty hard to handle. The people who want to hire a dog walker, maybe their dog's too aggressive to go to daycare, or it's just a really bad color, and so they don't want to walk the dog themselves. So that was one way to gain experience with some of the worst dogs because if you can handle those rescue dogs or shelter dogs that have been caged up for two weeks and they're just barging out of the cage, you should be able to handle anybody's pets. Um, And then the other volunteers would promote me to people they knew in town and they added a link to my website on their website. So do you still get referrals from the rescues that you work with? Are they still constantly providing referrals? Yep, all the time. Oh, wow. And so, I mean, do you have enough time in the day to work with all your clients, or have you had to actually sub out some of your work? Yeah, it's getting to the point. I mean, you can raise your raise your rates a little bit or cut back on some of the services. Right now, I'm thinking about not offering pet sitting in my home just because it's getting to be too much. When you start out, it's good to offer as many different things as you can. Like, maybe you can do pet sitting in your home and visit pets in their homes on top of your just dog walking and running sessions, or maybe you can do training as well. But then maybe later on you want to just pick and choose the ones you like the best. Okay. And so uh, where would you say the ratio stands with your business, pet sitting versus dog walking? How much of, you know, how much of each do you do? Uh, It's probably half and half right now. Oh, really? Half and half? Okay. It started out more of the dog walking and running, but then more people started wanting pet sitting with running sessions. Okay. Now, are there any associations that somebody looking to get into this would need to be aware of? Do they need to belong to an association? I mean, what are some things like that that somebody needs to know? Well, there's nothing required. I think it's a good idea to carry some kind of pet sitting insurance just because you can ne- you never know what's going to happen if a dog bites somebody or if there's damage. You don't want to be the one blamed for that. Um, I do have a liability form. I have everyone fill out on top of that. And what does insurance cost for what you're mentioning? I mean, is it is insurance expensive? I think it's pretty it's pretty reasonable. It's under five hundred a year. So. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. And so, uh, having. okay. And chances are you'll never need to use it, but yeah, and th- hopefully that's the idea with insurance, right? You have car insurance, and hopefully you never get into <laughs> yeah, a wreck. And right. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So in any case, so we talked about your book. Are there other tips from your book that you could share? Again, I don't want to give away the whole farm here because uh, obviously I want people to come and, and purchase your book. But are there other tips in the book that you feel are critical or important that people understand as far as getting started or taking their business from part time to the next level to where it's full time? Well, you just what I try to tell people is you just really need to find out what it is you're passionate about. And that's going to help drive your business because if you don't really love what you're doing, it's, you're, it's just not going to work out. That's why so many people fail when they start any kind of business, but especially sure. dog walking. Okay. And so what, uh, you know, from here over the next couple of years, what's on the next horizon for your business? Where do you plan on taking it and how big do you think you're going to get? Oh, it's hard to say. Um, I don't know. I guess right now I'm just working on staying in Fargo for now but maybe hiring some employees. Um, or branching out. I'm thinking about franchising out, run that much, to get it into some other cities. 
Excellent. Excellent. And so uh, for those that are listening to this and are interested and think, okay, yeah, I'd like to start a business or maybe I'm not sure, but they just want that information, where can they go to, to find your ebook and to find more about you and what you do? Um, they can visit my blog. It's thatmuck.com. There's a tab for the ebook there. Or they can just check out my dog running site. It's runthatmuck.com. And they're both things together. Excellent. And uh, one thing that, I, like I said, that I think is great is a lot of people out there, because I hear this all the time, people will say, oh, you can't make a living with, you know, working with pets. You can't make a living as a dog trainer. You can't make a living as a, as a pet sitter. And here you are in a, in a very small market, I think. I mean, Fargo is pretty small, right? Um, it's bigger than people. It's 100,000 people. So it's pretty okay. small, but bigger than people think. Gotcha. So here you are in a small market, and you've been able to take your passion for pets, and you've been able to turn it into a full-time living to the point where you're actually a little bit more busy than you'd like and, and are considering taking away certain services. And so I say that because a lot of people, whether they're, they're young and just getting into the workforce or they're maybe a little bit older or middle-aged or what have you, and they're looking to get away from corporate life, you know, if you can make this business in a small market like this, you can make it just about anywhere. And so I just, like I said, I have to give you a big congratulations. I think it's amazing what you're doing there, and I think you've built a really great business that, like I say, it's been fun to follow watching your blog over the last couple of years. So, And uh, in so any case, I want to say just a big thank you for being on the show. It is, again, just to reiterate, it is thatmutt.com, and that's T-H-A-T-M-U-T-T dot com. That's where you can find out more about Lindsay and more about her ebook. So check it out if you've ever had any interest, or even if you're a pet groomer or a dog trainer that's looking to add a different branch to your business, it's something that you're going to want to check out. So thanks again, Lindsay, for being on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, for those of you listening, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for a show, please email me at ty at petliferadio.com or visit my website, sixfiguredogbusiness.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.